Well, I've had a few people ask if I could give a little bit more of an explanation of how I wired the windlass uh, on my boat that I just recently installed. And I didn't shoot a lot of video during that uh, project. It just takes so much longer to do the project uh, while you're filming. And um, there's, I think, other channels out there that focus more on DIY stuff. And uh, yeah, I try to focus more on uh, the cruising and showing you guys places. But because I've been asked by a few people, I will uh, show you or explain a little bit uh, more in detail of how it's wired and uh, hopefully that uh, answers some of your questions. So here we're looking at the nav station which is at the aft port portion of the cabin and my quarter berth goes back my batteries are located right under here and the windlass is wired to one of those batteries. The negative cable, these are really heavy gauge cables, it runs from the battery all the way to the front to the windlass motor and then the positive runs from the battery to my battery switch right behind the battery switch to the right of it I'm not sure if you can see there's a breaker it's a 135 amp breaker and just to the right of that is a little tiny uh, resettable breaker for the controls uh, the other breakers for the the powering of the unit all the cabling, including the uh, control wires, uh, they run in behind the nav station. Under the port side settee, up behind the water tank, I had to drill holes through uh, some of the supports underneath. And it's a little bit darker up here, but here's my hanging locker, if you didn't see where we're walking. And they come out at the bottom, you can see them down at the bottom there maybe. I don't really put anything down there and I couldn't completely uh, bury the cables. I had to have some spots where I came through areas like this. And they go to this solenoid. So like I mentioned, the negative doesn't go to the solenoid, it goes directly to the windless motor. But that positive continues to the solenoid. And you can see it right here, it comes up. It hooks into the center terminal. And then from there, there's two positives that go on forward to the windlass. Underneath are the wires for the controls like the foot pedals and the uh, switch at the helm and whatever signal is sent to the solenoid from whichever uh, control I'm using, either the foot pedals or the switch at the helm, it sends a signal to the solenoid which determines which cable up here will be powered. One cable will rotate the windlass one way, one cable rotates the windlass the other way, if that makes sense. The cables continue on up. Now we're walking into the V-berth, into this locker. This is another spot that I couldn't uh, bury the wires completely. And they come just right here is the other side of the hanging locker through this little cupboard and through another hole. Luckily in the V-berth I have this shelf that they're all, the cables are all just up here. I can feel them. They go forward and then just at the very front you can see that little uh, dip in the uh, cabin top. That's where the holes are that go through to the anchor locker and the windlass is right on the other side of that wall. The only other wiring that I haven't mentioned goes from the solenoid back under the 
quarter berth. It's full of junk right now. And up um, into the uh, engine area at the back. And it goes outside to the switch right next to the helm. And basically that's the wiring. It wasn't uh, super complicated, but uh, nice to find a, a route that uh, worked and uh, kept it mostly concealed. One of the things that was noticed was that I wired the windlass to one of my existing batteries at the back of the boat instead of putting a new battery up near the bow, which would have eliminated me having to run heavy gauge wiring from those batteries at the back all the way to the windlass. It's quite expensive, that heavy gauge wiring, but the reason I didn't put a battery at the front is just because I didn't really have a suitable place for it. I do uh, know that was an option and certainly something you could consider or you should consider if you're doing an install like this. But for me, I just didn't want to have a battery up uh, in a space that I didn't really have space for. So you can go one of two ways and I just decided to go uh, to an existing battery which is uh, just the way I chose to do it. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, that's just uh, the way I chose to. And here's the switch next to the helm so this way I can control the boat by maneuvering it if I have to at the same time as I'm lowering or raising the anchor. Here we're at the bow of the boat. Here's the two foot pedals. Step on one, the anchor comes up. You step on the other one and it goes down. They have arrows on them. Not sure if you can see the arrows so that you know which one to push. And this windlass, I'm not sure if every windlass has it, but this one has a clutch. So right now it's tight and I can loosen it this is if you want the chain and the anchor to free fall, but you do want to uh, keep a little tension on it. You don't want it to get out of control while it's falling. But this way I can give it a tug, and now I can get inside to the locker. So here's the underside of the windlass, and you can see this the motor and the shaft that goes up to the windlass on top. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the wiring is there uh, over to the left of the screen or right of the screen. <laughs> it's upside down, so I'm not sure. Anyways, it's uh, connected all on the motor. And that's about it for wiring. It's not super complicated. Probably the two most challenging parts of this project uh, one was uh, having a design that worked for the existing bow locker because it was just a chain locker or anchor locker at the bow and it had an opening lid. So should I put the windlass above deck or below deck? What windlass should I get? There was uh, those kind of questions that had to be answered before I could even uh, move forward with the project. I eventually came up with a design that you've seen now and it has the opening lid the windlass I chose is a, I think they call it a horizontal windlass because the chain wraps horizontally. The, the vertical windlasses, the chain would come up over top and go down. With those windlasses, they're, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but uh, they only get a partial bite, like 90 degrees, I think, uh, is how much the chain or, and I think they're usually just chain only. Um, with when you have the, the wheel going like this and that's because the chain or the chain just comes across and it drops down so it's like a 90 degree bite on the anchor road with the windlass that I got the style where the drum is this way it gets a 180 degree bite and I was able to do an anchor uh, road that ha was a chain rope combination uh, because of that because the gypsy I have on it it can accommodate rope and chain so I didn't have to go to all chain, which was nice. Uh, it just eliminated some weight at the bow for me, and 100 feet of chain is more than enough, uh, I think. 
And that's about it. It was a pretty simple install, and but a game changer. I think if there's two game changers for solo sailing I've made on this boat, uh, one is the Auto Helm last year. I don't know how I sailed without that, a and filmed. And the other one will be this uh, windlass, because anchoring alone, especially up north here, there's a lot of deep anchorages that are suitable for anchoring, but they're just, you know, 60, 80 feet deep. So it's a lot of uh, anchor road to haul. And when it's windy or there's current and you're in a tight space, potentially, uh, there could be problems. So having uh, this windlass will really change solo sailing for me. I don't think I mentioned it uh, in any previous videos, but the rate that the anchor is hauled at uh, with this windlass, it's the RC 10-8 is the model uh, by Maxwell. I think it was 69 to 75 feet per minute is what it raises the anchor at. So 150 feet is up in two minutes, which is uh, crazy because I'm not used to things happening that fast when you're hauling anchor. But uh, I'm sure I'll get used to it. And what else about the windlass? Um, it was a little bigger than what I needed. It, it can accommodate a much larger and heavier boat. But I sort of do that with things I get a little bit more than I need uh, because I think that's better to, to work this windlass uh, lightly with the, the ground tackle I have. It, it won't be a big load on it. So uh, if I had gotten a smaller model that would have been cheaper, uh, I might be working it harder and potentially have uh, an issue. But yeah, and then oh, and the last thing I did, I, I already mentioned that I upgraded the chain. I had 75 feet before, now I have 100 feet. It's spliced right into the rope, so it, it just it's a smooth transition as it is hauled and uh, on the gypsy on the windlass. And then uh, I upgraded my anchor. It was a 35 pound CQR and now I have a 44 pound uh, Rockna, which really is uh, <laughs> pretty amazing. I, Never felt like the the boat has been anchored more solidly as I have the last two times I've anchored with that extra chain and uh, that Rockna anchor. And the anchor is quite big uh, for what I really would need. Well, I hope that explains uh, a little bit in more detail about how the windlass is wired. It, it's not really a project that's super complicated. It's just, you know running the wires, drilling the holes through uh, the spots you have to and finding a suitable path and just wiring it up according to the diagram that's provided in the manual. Something else I just uh, did yesterday was uh, haul my boat out. So before I approached the lift I looked in my manual where the slings should go. Some boats have it marked on the side of the boat. It says sling here uh, with an arrow. I don't have that so I just quickly check the manual and I just put little uh, pieces of tape so because the lift operator is up quite high and this gives him the target so I let him know I got the pieces of tape there uh, so he knows exactly where the slings are supposed to be according to the manual and this other one was on it's always on the gate area here so I just put it down on the tow rail there and that way he knows uh, where to position the slings so that it's uh, lifted properly and not going to damage anything underneath. And here's the manual. It's the original manual for this boat. And uh, it's got a bunch of diagrams in the back. And sling location. There we go. So I just use this diagram to position my little red markers. And the lift operator knows where to put the, the slings. <laughs> it was only a, a half haul and the reason I did that was just it's been almost a year since the boat's been hauled and I wanted to check the bottom. I, I know I haven't hit anything but uh, and you know knock on wood <laughs> that, uh, that I don't hit anything in the future but it's still just good to do a, a visual uh, inspection on the bottom, check the, the keel joint, check the keel itself, check your propeller and uh, rudder. Everything looked great. 
and I had my friend Max come out and help me with that. I go to Port Ed. It's just uh, about two hours from here. It's driving time is only 15 minutes, but by boat you have to go out of the harbor and into Port Ed. And I was hauled out there last year. I have a little annual maintenance uh, video where I painted the bottom and I swapped out a through hull for my new depth sounder and uh, a knot meter that reads the speed of the boat. Um, I think those are the two main things I did with that haul out. Anyway, so everything looked great. And, but the reason I, I hauled out uh, was just to do the visual inspection on everything and um, to replace my zincs. So I'm here in Port Ed. I was here last year, you might remember, and my friend Max is helping me out today. And the reason I am hauling out, I'm just doing a half lift, and it's to replace the zincs. So I, ha I put two of them on, and I knew uh, they were probably going to be due to be replaced. And I've been checking it with my GoPro on the pole to see if they're there. And I knew they were both there a month ago. But looking at this, um, I mean, I'm down to the last little bit of the zinc. So it's time to uh, put the new ones on. And I'm sure that's the right size. They have different sizes inside. But I'm going to take those off, or this last one off, and then put the new ones on. And I'm set for another year. I'm not going to bottom paint this year because it's holding up really well. And I don't need to, I'll do that next year. I could have given it a pressure wash, but I'm always worried about taking off more paint than sludge, and there's really not that much. I could just scrub it with a, brush, a soft brush um, at the dock. That's uh, good enough for me. And, yeah, I brought these out because the boat's really high right now. It's probably just gonna fall apart. But one of them is missing, so that means it already burned off, and it's good timing to do this. So I'm just doing what's called a half haul out, so I'm not actually going into the yard with the slings and everything, or sorry, with the stands. I'm just doing a half haul, I'm sitting on the haul out area here, and I will uh, just get put back in the water in about 10 minutes. What do you think, Max? I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that came off a lot easier than I was expecting it to, so that's, yeah, that's they're, nice. Yeah, they're not... Uh, I should have brought a little brush down just to scrub this, but... Go for a swim later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we checked the water temperature and it was 9.6 degrees Celsius. So yeah, a bit too cold for my liking. Yeah. Maybe it's time to invest in a wetsuit. But when you do a half haul out, you got time. Like, uh, I think you get, well, I only need about 20 minutes, but uh, you could get an hour, I guess, or whatever they, the standard is. Yeah. And I did, I replaced these last July, so it's uh, almost June right now, so 11 months. I probably could have got another month out of that last one, but I didn't want to wait until it's gone better to replace it while you still have them on and this prevents uh, galva galvanic, galvanic corrosion some people call it electrolysis but really it's galvanic corrosion which means electrical current in the water is eating your metal as you can see on the thing down here I mean, this is new <laughs> last July and this is 11 months later, so what's left of it. And the reason that we put zinc on is because it's a soft metal and the galvanic corrosion targets soft metals. So is there a nut in that uh, other side of that zinc there or is the thread right into the uh, zinc itself? There's a little nut, um, you can see, that's just inserted in there. Okay, yeah. And then, oh sorry, and then this one has a nut too. So they're just, so it's not, I think if the threaded part went into the zinc, it would just Too deteriorate. Soft. Like yeah. It has to have a, so you don't want to drop these. I mean, I'm keeping the old ones just in case I drop one. Well, I'll probably keep those little 
stainless steel bolts, bolts. Yeah. yeah may as well keep them but you got to get these right off in order to put the new one on well I'm really glad I did this now because uh, I was it's been on my mind that it's gonna be due I'm not an expert on this topic, but some people have said uh, you should only put one on. Some people put them all over their boat, but I have heard that you know you should put it only in one sort of targeted area. Otherwise, that electricity in the water doesn't really know where to go. Okay. And so it, it picks a target. This this will attract it better. Is there any other other, other spots that you'll have uh, that corrosion happening? Uh, Besides well, the, sh the prop and the shaft? Well, here, it'll or? go right up into the boat. Oh, okay. Wow. So, but this is where it's going to come first because this is the metal that's exposed, right? Right. So, and this is the metal in the... I think that's where it would come first because... But it, it'll attack uh, the wiring and everything in the boat, right? If, if you don't have these sacrificial zincs. Right. So that's why it's... So for a $10 zinc and a haul out, it, it could save you a lot of grief in the long run. So. And I really wish I brought a little scraper. Maybe they have a little scraper I can just borrow just to get the crop clean. And this, I'll throw in the garbage. So that's it, those are on, I secure them tight. And uh, we'll be on our way soon. Right on. Cool. Well, I guess that's it for now, and I'm not really sure what's next on the agenda. I do want to get away on the boat some more, but uh, finding the time to get off work is a little difficult right now. Uh, I was training somebody as an apprentice uh, for forensics, but uh, they're soon to be no longer working here, unfortunately, so it makes it challenging to get away. And uh, it doesn't really help with the work-life balance. So, I do hope to get away this summer uh, for a couple weeks at least. And uh, I'll try to do some weekend trips when I can. And take you guys along with me. So, uh, stay tuned for that.